Helldivers 2 takes place sometime around 2224, where Super Earth is managed by an AI and citizens live under an awesome managed democracy where they can serve life in prison or be executed for speaking about the war negatively, or just not saluting the flag enough, as all real citizens should do three times a day. At any time, there could be up to under half a million Helldivers spreading freedom across currently 53 sectors, totaling 253 planets. But once you realize that each squad of four gets five reinforcements per player for a total of 20, that Helldiver count shoots up to something like two and a half million, which is all the Helldivers need. The training tutorial says that on this day, they are putting under 50,000 citizens through the quickest 10 minute training montage a military has ever seen. But the expected survival rate is only 21.3%, meaning that only over 10,000 will live. I guess we know who's been doing their daily flag salutes and who hasn't. Also, each Helldiver is said to be a special snowflake that unknown to them is then frozen and wakes up on a ship where they receive a gun, a cool set of armor, and a lifespan of about three minutes. We also see Super Earth's Patriots being shot out of space destroyers at well above supersonic speeds. And seeing how the pods immediately enter the planet's atmosphere, we can assume they are shot from a low planet orbit, hitting the ground in about 17 seconds. If the travel distance is anything like Earth's, being 248 miles or 400 kilometers from low orbit to the surface, that would mean that these guys are generally falling at speeds of 84,500 kilometers or 52,500 miles per hour. Sure, the expendable hell pods slow down a little, but they must be lined with some sort of shock absorbing technology to not turn everyone into a human slushy. Along with the standard firearms, each diver is luckily given access to advanced weaponry, like powerful rail guns that shoot liberty over six times the speed of sound, bombing runs, and orbital lasers to melt all your friends at something like 10,000 degrees Celsius or 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Standard issue is that each diver is given four stimulants that can heal them from practically any injury, including gunshots, burning, and completely crushed bones. So rather than being a powerful combination of Advil and morphine, these things instead are more like having stem cells on steroids. Man, talk about having Wolverine in a bottle. Giant terminate bugs in the game are said to have evolved over millions of years, where after inventing faster than light travel or FTL drives in 2084, humanity meant the creatures who traders say were actually peaceful. They also say that we actually started killing them to harvest them for the oil they produce that coincidentally fuels said FTL drives. Further conspiracies, like the illegal broadcasts, say that we actually farmed and genetically modified the terminids, causing them, much like bugs and insects, to rapidly evolve worse than ever before, and form entirely new species in as little as three generations, where they then escape, causing an outbreak on the planet. Still, much about the bugs remains unknown, like if and how they actually get around from planet to planet. The bugs could hurl themselves to a new planet via spores inside a meteor, which sounds cool, but launching any sort of projectile to a planet like Mars requires an insanely high level of precision. Using complex mathematics regarding the projectile's trajectory, speed, and orbit of both planets. So either these guys have one serious brain bug on the team, or a traitor might think humanity's actually planting them there. Bile Titan rumors say it's considered small on its home planet, leading some to wonder why we might have picked a fight in the first place. Super Earth once fought against the cyborgs, or humans who broke free from Super Earth and took cyberpunk technology too far on their home planet Cyberstan. They also gave us their children, the automatons, who seem to outnumber humanity a hundred to one. And seeing the level of technology they have, along with their mass production line, we could ballpark each heartless robot as costing a whopping 1800 US dollars, or the price of the average Star Wars battle droid. After Malevolon Creek, the bots seem to be pushing for their home world of Cyberstan, where their forefathers remain in prison working the planet's many mines, which would give them access to untold amounts of resources and holy <laughs> the giant cyborg siege mech boss is still in prison there. Super Earth was once watched over for thousands of years by an advanced alien race called the Illuminate, who we then immediately went to war with upon meeting them to obtain their technology. While an alien loving traitor might label this as a serious case of xenophobia, we all know they had to go down, and will never resurface to fill that giant void on the map. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved my most interesting fact for last. Individuals who love their political and or government system above all else have something known as authoritarian loyalty. Symptoms include prizing your way of life above critical thinking, empathy, and following orders blindly. But you get to name your very own spaceship? Yeah, let's smash some bugs and get us some fuel.
fuel. If you love Super Earth, then you may want to check out these videos of how powerful your other favorite characters are. See you in the next one.